right. So wait, 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 wait. Start over, dude. Really? I I wasn't ready. All I said was, to... all right, so okay, ready? Here we go. That Here was go. such a that was such an opening line. All right, so wow. I started over. Did that go good better than the last one? No, this one sucked worse. <laughs> Do it again. Welcome to F is in Frank. Uh, you guys, if you haven't uh, been on this channel before or, or listened to this podcast before, uh, it's with my brother Charles, who uh, will be popping in now and then to uh, speak on different topics. That's basically what we're here for. We're here to find out, you know, it's a, it's a phrase that my brother uh, Charles taught me was, it's called life resumes. And I, I'm very interested in interviewing even my own uh blood i want to interview and find out what are some of the things going on in, in your life and what's it like because i can't do everything he does so whatever he's going through i don't go through that he goes through thought processes like i don't i could never imagine and my other brother jim does the same thing but he has a whole another another world that he deals with so we can pick their brains we can find out what's going on and that's what we're gonna do today we're gonna uh talk to charles and speak to him about um the things he's going through, which uh, one in particular, it's one specific uh, topic, as you can tell by the title. We are definitely going to be mentioning some um, thoughts on food. So uh, I will I will introduce kind of, I've, I've done this before, but I want to brag because he won't. I know you won't. Um, I want to brag about the incredible job my brother has done. Uh, it was a long journey to get to this point. It wasn't just, uh, correct me, seven years or six? It's um, a six-year journey so far. Six year. Okay. Yeah. So for six years, but this journey started way before that. And I'll let him explain all that stuff. But basically, um, what we're here to talk about today is the journey he's taken uh, with regards to the uh, food in his life and uh, his eating habits and his physical habits and everything that he's discovered along the way. Um, at first, we heard about it and it was like, eh, yeah, whatever. And then we heard about it, eh, whatever. And then we heard about it and then we saw it. And we were like, hmm, we got to take this serious. There's proof. If you Now, for those of you who are watching the video of this podcast, um, I just, I'm having my brother stand up so we can we can see him on camera and he's got the coolest monitor by the way because if you watch when when charles stands up and walks but to the door and faces us the camera his that's his monitor it moves it follows him so could you go all the way back to the door please because i want to see your Will waistline i want to see your waistline uh okay wait uh it's not showing go back further all right how about that no to the door can you go to the door all the way can you touch the knob yeah there you go okay great um uh, turn sideways again. I want to. I, here's what I noticed. Ready? The one thing, because I, I visited him recently, and this is where I saw it most. I saw it really in person. Oh, that's a better shot. You could see the whole physique. You could see his stomach is totally flat. His stomach's flat. And we'll get into the details, but um, yeah, you can come on back. Sorry. I uh, appreciate no you. Show it. His stomach's <laughs> flat. His chest is, is tight. Uh, his form looks really good and you know i don't go hey bro man i like your body i mean you don't you don't ever say that but man i noticed it hey bro yeah. i like your body that was good nice. yeah. yeah yeah and it was very it was like i was looking at you when i came to visit and i'm like this is i've never seen you like this ever right right in all right. the years Right. It's weird when you're like, well, I just turned 60. You came out for my 60th birthday. Mm -hmm. And when you, you're like, you, you feel like, wait, I had to get to 60 before I got to the healthiest I've ever, I've ever been in my life. That's, there's something wrong with that. That whole concept of like, you have to wait. You, you know, and imagine if we were in our 20s and, and we know what we know now, how right. much healthier we would have been our whole right. lives. So yeah, it's, it's a, it's a weird thing, but, um, and it, here's the thing. The thing is, is like, I know you wanted me to show how my body's transformed. It means more to you than probably anybody else because you grew up with me, but, and I wasn't ever heavy, 
but I, I didn't look the way I look now. But here's the thing, just because someone is thin on the outside, right, doesn't mean they're healthy on the inside. So you can look at people and, and we tend to do that. We know that if you're fat, that you're probably unhealthy, right? It's like it's an outward um, uh, manifestation of, of lack of health. But that doesn't necessarily mean just because you're thin that you that it's an outward manifestation of health. Oh, yeah. It people have dropped dead jogging, you know. Right. And thin. Right. So it, if you are healthy, you are almost 100 percent going to be thin. If you're unhealthy, you're 100% going to be fat, but you can be thin and not healthy, okay? So it isn't about being thin. This was never about being thin for me, right? I, you, were always, I mean, you were always a twig. You were always, right, but, right. I was, I was but the fat I, kid. Right, but I had a bit of a gut as I grew older, right? You get a little bit of that, that dad bod, as people call it. And yeah. and I I wouldn't take my shirt off. I don't want to take my shirt off. Like I, I, I wouldn't wear like this shirt I'm wearing now because I didn't like the way my stomach stuck out. So, um, so just because I don't thin is not enough. Okay. That, cause you could just starve yourself. Right. And then you're, you're, you're deficient in all the nutrients that you need and the proteins and you're going to be ill. So it isn't about being thin because you can find plenty of um, very sick, thin people. It's about how you feel and how you feel compared to how you used to feel, okay? So for me, that's the measure. And that's where I pretty much say, well, I can say, this is how I felt eating this way, and this is how I feel eating this way. So that's the first thing. The second thing is you can't just say it's diet, okay? Because diet isn't enough to, to feel the way I feel. Diet is not enough. You know, they always say, oh, diet and exercise, you know, that, that trope. <clears throat> well, that always. is actually, always say that. You know, they it, slip it, it in like it's stupid. embarrassing. Exactly. They're always like, all right, you can take our magic pill so you don't have to do anything with. And then they just kind of slip in the with diet and exercise. Right. Or they might put it on the screen in tiny, tiny. Yeah. Yep. Right. So they got they got that out of the way. But it's really you don't need the pill. If you do the diet and exercise, you could just eliminate their product. But they don't they want to be able to make the claims. So they say, if you take our pill with diet and exercise, you, you, you have these amazing results. But I would make the argument that if you just didn't take the pill and you did the diet and exercise first, you wouldn't need the damn pill, right? right. So um, so they can make the claim as long as they slip in that diet and exercise, right? right. But of course. it sounds like the pill is doing the, the work. When really, the di- if you get your diet dialed in and you, get, and you start exercising, you exercise properly, then you um, you don't need the pill. Wait, right. taking pills is easy for people. <clears throat> you me. Taking, I'm, I'm joking up. Taking pills is easy for people. That's not the issue. Taking a pill is not a problem. That diet and exercise is the hardest thing to do over everything. Yes, yes. And it's hard because we've been doing the opposite for so long, right? So imagine when we were kids, right? If mom was like into this diet and in, you know, this is the right diet and this is the right exercise. And we're going to do that. And she just trained us as kids. And we just did it in school. Instead, PE was just a waste of time. They don't teach you anything about how to exercise or how to be healthy. So PE was a colossal waste of time. Imagine PE wasn't that. How great that, I mean, you just would, it wouldn't be hard. It, you, you would just eat the way you eat and you would exercise every day because that's what you do. Like nobody goes, oh, uh, shower. I have to shower. Well, oh, they did at age 14. Teeth. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm talking now as adults. We don't go, mm, oh, Jesus, showering is so much work. I just rather take a pill or spray myself with cologne so I don't stink. We don't do that. We take our shower. Why? Because that's just what people do. What we, we don't do is we don't go, oh, well, I exercise. Oh, God, exercise. I don't want to exercise. I'd rather take a pill. Well, yeah, but you take a shower, don't you? Right? You just It's just what you do. No one ever goes... Let's see, am I going to shower today? You know, I don't know if I want to shower anymore. I think, you know, I wanted to shower. I did that whole New Year's resolution thing. And, you know, here it is February. I'm done showering for the year. No one does that. We just shower, right? right? You just shower. You don't think about it. You don't think like, oh, I'm going to wash my clothes. You just wash your clothes, right? Right. But we think, oh, am I going to eat healthy or am I going to eat unhealthy? We're always making that decision. We're always trying to make the choice because we like to choose not. Right. If you just decide 
like if you were like go back in time and you were five years old and you just the decision was made for you by your parents and you just from that point forward you're just going to always be eating healthy and exercising by the time you got to our age you'd be like yeah that's just what i do what do you mean you don't exercise Hold it's on. like not brushing your teeth before we get into the way you eat healthy before we get into that let's talk about the way people eat healthy you know how people eat healthy yeah Making- i mean Making, yeah, putting fake stuff to create the same flavor of bad food and then making bad food supposedly healthy. And that's how they eat healthy. Like donuts. Let's say, you know, like you see that all the time. Ooh, hey, a a chocolate eclair that's keto. What? Those two shouldn't even go together. That's like an oxymoron. That's That's how people eat. But you didn't do that. No, I, when I, okay, so let me just talk quickly my, the journey, right? So it was like low carb, did that for a while, kept cutting, 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 cutting. And then I got fairly low. I was like, oh, you you know, is this, what, how close am I to keto? And at the time I started, I thought, I mean, these keto people, they're like wacko, fanatical. I'm not going to do that. Right. Mm -hmm. But here I am cutting, cutting, cutting. And then I looked and I'm like 25 grams of carbs away from being keto. And so I'm like, well, I guess I'm keto. And then I just started doing keto. But part of the keto, the whole keto lifestyle, and you can look, there's all these products around keto, right? It's all about taking good food, you know, taking bad foods and trying to make good versions of that bad food. Keto cookies, keto bread, keto pizza. That's what these, I'm talking about. Right. That's how people so eat people healthy. are constantly, well, no, no. I mean, there's two types of people who try to eat healthy, right? There's the, uh, the, the, the common knowledge, right? Mm-hmm. Which is, um, oh, you know, vegetables and plants right. and and grains and everything non non meat, right? That's the common knowledge, right? And that's not healthy for a, a multitude of reasons. <clears throat> and or you know, people try to go vegan and then they just can't. They can't. They have too many health problems and they and they fall off the wagon because they can't. They can't sustain. Um, I spoke to a woman last night. Um, she. She was vegan for like a month and a half and she was miserable and she just didn't know that she had to supplement with B12 and all these different supplements she had to take. And well, if my philosophy is if your diet requires supplements, then your diet is not a natural diet because what 200 years ago, we didn't have supplements only 200 years ago, not 2.5 million years ago, 200 years ago, people didn't take supplements. They got all of their nutrition from food. So, um, so that that's a problem into itself. So there's that approach. And then people are like, oh, I'm doing this whole keto thing, right? Because it's popular. You shouldn't do it because it's popular because popularity comes in and goes out, right? And if something's good for you, you know, like, oh, I brush my teeth because it's popular. And then two years from now, you're like, ah, I don't brush my teeth anymore. You get teeth falling out, right? Nobody does that. So the idea is to, to look at the look at the diet, right? Look at why you're eating the way you're eating. And you shouldn't have to supplement your diet with anything other than food. Because if you are, if your diet requires supplements, then your diet is the wrong diet. It's not optimal. Can I interrupt you real quick? Yeah, second? go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I guarantee half the audience has turned this off because they heard stuff they didn't like. They heard stuff that they're doing and that, yeah, trust me, the moment you start talking about things that they don't want to give up. <laughs> I, they... I, look, I've done it. I've, I've done, done it. it. I'm not. I'm, I'm not. I'm, I'm not holy offender. here. I'm not holy know. here. I'm. We've saying, all I, screwed it up. The thing is, is that you you don't want to hear it. Like you may not. This might not be the right message for you. It might not be the right time in your life. Like you hear something, it's like, rah, 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 and you're like, Ugh, I, I I got too many problems right now. Yeah. I can't deal with one more thing. I have to deal with right. But if you get on top of this, the other problems in your life, you will have energy to be able to overcome. It's, it's hard to explain, but when you're eating right and you're, and you're doing exercises, like you, I, oh, I got to go exercise and I don't feel like exercising. It doesn't matter. I do it anyway. Right. And in fact, I never feel like exercising ever. I never feel like it. I don't enjoy exercising. I don't enjoy it. Like I enjoy lots of other things, but what I really enjoy is how I feel afterwards. So a little bit of pain. So I, this is my philosophy, short-term pain, long-term gain. Okay. Right. right. Short term, short term pleasure, long time pain. Right. Right. You want to eat that donut? Eat that donut. That's very pleasurable, especially that first bite. Oh man, that's the best. Right. Um, You got dopamine 
uh, releasing your brain. It's, oh man, this is the best ever. Your second bite is nowhere near as good as the first bite. Never is. So you're like chasing that high of that first bite, right? You can drink a bunch of water between the first bite and the second. You can try to reset your palate in some way, you know, rub it with a piece of paper or something, whatever. You can do whatever you, you have to do to reset your brain to try to, to get that same, that same high that you got from the first bite of that donut. Okay. But very short period. And it's just pleasure and it's very short lived. And now long-term pain, because we all know there's nothing in a donut that is healthy. There's like zero Okay. You're pain. talking, you just, you're speaking on the food, like it's a drug. It's exactly, well, that's what, exactly what it is. Right. So if you, if you think about it and I, and I was on, I, I was addicted, I was addicted to sugar and I was addicted to carbohydrates. Right. And I know because I went through withdrawals. Right. And that's why people have a hard time making the transition because there is a, there's a, there's a big withdrawal um, process that you have to go through. That's why we tell people go slow. Right. So if you take someone who's an addict on say heroin and you just cold turkey them, boom, they're going to go through absolute screaming misery fits, right? That's why they give them methadone and they they, they slowly change the dose and, and they walk them down away from right, it, right? right. Opioids, anything like that. You you need to you need to come off of slowly. You can really um, um, go through a lot of pain and hurt when you um, go cold, cold turkey. So people get excited. Oh, I want to do this carnivore thing or keto thing. Right? They jump in with two feet. Well, if you can jump in with two feet, you can jump out with two feet. Right. And they usually so, do. Exactly. Because right. it just, if you can change, you can, you can change your mind like that. You can change your mind right back. Right. So here, let's think about habits. Right. So brushing your teeth, washing your clothes, taking a shower. These are ha habitual things we do every day. And we don't even think about it. It's just part of our life. Right. No one debates it. No one tries to recruit you. Hey, why don't you start brushing your teeth? You're 40 now and you haven't brushed your teeth your whole life. Then this doesn't even happen. Right. Unless you're a dentist. But that just doesn't happen. So. Um, how do habits form, right? Habits form slowly. No one says, oh, I, you know what? This weekend, I'm just going to start smoking three packs a day. No one says that. They're like, oh, uh, just one cigarette when I drink, right? Mm -hmm. As I go out drinking and I might have a cigarette because someone has a cigarette, you bum a cigarette. Oh yeah, I'll smoke that cigarette. And then, you know, so you do it once on the weekends when you drink. And then, you know, maybe one turns into two. And then, you know, two turns into on the weekends into like, well, that's just once a day. And then, well, you know, I guess I can have it on a Wednesday because, you know, it's far enough from the weekend and all, you know, or maybe a Friday. You say, well, it's close to the weekend. So okay. you make excuses and you slowly grow this habit to a one pack a day to a two pack a day. And that happens over a long period of time. So right. my, the thing about this is so how that's how a habit forms, right? Whether it's good or bad is independent, okay? So if if you can jump in, right? You can jump so out. So true, so true. You, if you want to create a good habit, you do it very slowly. You integrate it into your life so you don't even realize that you're doing it. Same with the cigarettes, right? You treat it just like you get addicted to smoking, right? But you do a good habit the same way. Let it happen over a long period of time. So we, you make small changes, small incremental changes, right? Um, and that's how you you can build a good habit. Sorry. Now, you want to talk? No, about no, this? no. I totally agree with everything you're saying because I've experienced the habit. I've experienced the addiction. Uh, I've experienced all these things. But one of the things that bugs me is the excuses that people use when they're talking with their food. You're like, you know, you really... And I've done it. And okay, there's so nothing in this right. show... There's nothing in this show that I'm going to say that I haven't done myself. Uh, I uh, Or me. Yeah. Or me, okay. So, so let me tell you, I have a... Say, oh, go ahead. Uh, okay. I'm going to talk about that because I have a thing I call the evil brain. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, and I recognize I have the, and I've had the evil brain talking to me all the time, my whole life. And I didn't realize it until I was in the gym and you're like doing push-ups, right? And you have 45 seconds of doing these push-ups, right? You're doing push-ups. And your brain, your evil brain is gone. It's like the remember in the cartoons, they had the devil on your shoulder. Yep. Same, same idea. But the evil brain is telling me inside my head, hey, you know, let's get oh, the the instructor will go, oh, 10 more seconds. And there, and my evil brain goes, pops in and goes, hey, hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all, you're almost done. Just just you might as well just slow down now and quit. And and you know, you did enough. And you don't want to hurt yourself. All these excuses 
the evil brain is right there telling you all the reasons That's perfect. why you shouldn't do what you should be doing. So oh, I you have the same that. brain I do. Everyone. I mean, I'm not special. So what happened was I got to the point where I said, you know what? I don't want to hear that voice anymore. And so what I said to myself is, okay, every time the evil brain tells me something, I'm going to do the opposite of what the evil brain is telling me. Right? So if the evil brain said to quit early, I'd quit late. I'd wait for the bell to go off and I'd do one or two more push-ups. Take that evil brain. You're not the boss of me. And I kept doing that in the gym. Every time I heard the evil brain, nope. Like, oh, you better not pick up them heavyweights. Oh, well, you know what? Fuck you, evil brain. I'm picking up the heavyweights. Right. Pick up the heavyweights. And I'm like, all right, evil brain, this is on you. And guess what happened over a long, like maybe a three to six month period? Evil brain went away. I did the opposite of what the evil brain told me. And it just went away. The voice stopped. Because why? Because I punished the evil brain. I said to the evil brain, okay, if you're going to say do A, and I know it's come from the evil brain because that's the easy thing to do, I'm going to do the opposite of A, whatever it is. And so that's the thing. If you want to talk about what excuses we tell, it comes from the evil brain. The evil brain is telling you, you know, what it's just, you know, just every once in a while, you know, in my everything, everything in moderation, that's the evil brain talking to you. You know, there it you is. Don't do there this it is. Every day. That's you don't a big do this one. Every day. You don't do this every day. Hey, it's your birthday, right? This is your birthday. You know, you know, you, oh, wait, wait, you worked out hard in the gym, you know, today. So you deserve this, right? Evil brain, evil brain telling you all this stuff, telling you the easy way, giving you the whatever the easy thing is. So that's the, that's the thing that you have to learn how to combat. That's is so to funny. kill that guy. That's so and the funny. only way I killed it was to do the polar opposite of whatever it told me. When I recognized the evil brain, I'm like, oh, wait, the evil brain's telling me to quit early. Nope. I'm like, fuck you, evil brain. That was my a mantra. Fuck you, evil brain. That was it. I would just say that to myself and do extra push-ups, go extra fast, go extra hard. And, and that extra pain, that extra pain pretty much trains your brain to go, oh, we better shut the hell up. Right. Okay. So that was my mantra. My mantra was that. And you just, you just have, you are the boss of you. And you, we let that voice in our head. We sit there run until the evil brain lives. gives us the right exit. Oh, that's a, that's a low yeah. calorie piece of cake. That's a low carb, you know, and it's a bunch of crap. It's a bunch of crap. The food you're eating. What, why should I, why could I have the French fries? Um, well, let's see. They were baked. Oh, they were cooked in peanut oil. There you go. Peanut oil is oh, healthy. Peanut oil is healthy. It's not. Yes. But you, but you think you know. oh, peanut, right? It's healthy. So here's the thing. It's like this. You're in the you're pushing your shopping cart right down the aisle, and you're looking at stuff like, oh, this is gluten free. Oh, I think I'll put that in my cart. If it was cyanide and it was gluten free, would you put it in your cart? And then you go, this is gluten free. Oh, that's right. You don't know what gluten is, but if they're telling you that it's gluten free, so let's just make up something. It's blah blah free. Okay, so I'm going to just put that on all the packages. It, you don't even have people won't even learn what blah, blah is. They'll just go, oh, blah, blah, free. Wow, that blah, blah thing must be bad because they're telling me that this doesn't have any blah, blah in it. So it must be that must make this thing instantly good. I'm going to buy it. Right. That's how dumb we are. Right. That's how stupid we are. We all have done this. Every last one of us have wow. done this before. Been and there, the other done thing that. is. Right. Or it has extra. If you say, oh, this has is uh, fortified with blah, blah, or has extra blah, blah. Right. Then you're like, oh, this blah, blah thing must be good because they're telling me they put extra in there. And why would they put something bad in? No. And then tell me about it. They'll Wait put a minute. Bad shit if in they had food. to put something good in it, it wasn't good in the first place. Probably. But the thing yeah. is, is if they're telling me that they're putting it in, then it must be good. Right. Because they wouldn't put something bad in and then tell me about it. They'd hide that in the ingredients on the side of the box. Right. So we're all, we, just, we're all we don't even know what blah, blah is. We don't know what blah, blah is. We don't know what blah, blah is. We're just going to go, oh, it has 28% more blah, blah. I'll put that in my cart. Right. Without even knowing what blah, blah is. We just know. We just have these signals of what's good and what's bad. We have these signals that we see. Something free is that thing is bad and this has none of it. Something with more uh, of it in there, that must be good. And therefore I'm going to buy it. You don't look at any of the other ingredients. You look at none of the other ingredients. You just go, oh, 
And that, and if you need an excuse, there's your excuse right there to buy something you know deep down in your head, this shit's bad for me. But oh look, it's made with a canola or whatever. Some it has some blah blah, blah blah in it, right? Oh. That, that's healthier, right? I, I'm, 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 I'm eating a healthy donut here. There is no such thing. I don't care. You're never going to have a healthy donut. So okay. it's like a healthy I, bullet to the brain. We're, I'm there laughing no because thing. we all have done this. We've I know. I'm it. telling you everything some I've done. Do it all. Yeah. Some, some are still doing it. I'm doing, yep. I've done it in all yep. variations. So yep. that's what's humorous is because it's, it's weird. We know we're talking ourselves into. We're all the same, dude. We're all the same. No one here in this conversation is special in any way, shape, or form. They just we're all making the same mistakes. We're all. Uh, no one talks about this stuff. We didn't hear anybody. Yeah, I, I had to go sixty years of my life. Well, it was fifty-four years when I started this. Fifty-four years of my life before I, I, I just started figuring stuff out. Then I looked on the internet and tried to learn from other people. And there are other people trying to figure out the same stuff. Nobody sits you down and says, look, there's this evil brain. He's going to, you know, or this little devil on your shoulder. He's going to tell you all the things you want to hear. And you're going to rationalize your decisions that way. You want that donut and you're going to hear the evil brain go, hey, you deserve that donut. You worked hard today, right? Or, oh, you need extra energy. There's energy. Your birthday's next year. How about that? <laughs> exactly, right? It's all, there's always something. There's always something. And if you want it badly enough, then your brain's going to come up with a reason why you should, you deserve it or why it's good for you, right? You can come up with some reason and then you're going to make a bad choice. Okay, I want to talk about a hot topic that's big today and drives you nuts. <laughs> Are you ready? Soy. That's all I got to say. Soy. That's it. And You're just like lighting the fuse. That's it. Stepping back. I'm going to sit back for the next hour. Go ahead. Uh, yeah. I, I'm, <laughs> where do I start? Um, Anywhere. Okay. So, right. So, soy is in everything. It's in all of our products. It, soy has what are known as phytoestrogens. Phytoestrogens are plant-based estrogen-like molecule. It doesn't act like estrogen um, in women. It blocks the estrogen receptors because it binds to them and doesn't do what estrogen's job is, but it doesn't allow the real estrogen to bind, right? Um, and in men, it, it acts like estrogen, right? Um, uh, hey, soy wait, milk. Wait, wait, wait. what do you mean it acts? I want to know what it does to men. Okay, so say, right, it. So, say yeah. it, man. Say it. Man boobs. Man, man boobs. boobs. That's right. Boobs. You get right. boobs. Yep. Um, okay. Go you, ahead. I, that's a lot. You have to eat a lot of soy. Uh, uh, like, but it's there's happened. a guy. Oh yeah, there was a guy who drank uh, like a ton of soy milk all, all every day. Right, he's constantly right. drinking that. Right. He had that problem, you know, because it acts. It's an estrogen like. Um, um, uh, chemical in it so so this the it disrupts your endocrine system and your endocrine system is the is your hormones right your hormone system um so that system is about all about hormones and it, it is a it disrupts it and um and the problem is that that's not the only thing that's bad in soy but that's one of the biggest things and the plant benefits from predator you know from attacking attacking predators um, cause it's not actively thinking about attacking you, but the plant, it's a survival benefit to the plant. If it's predators are unable to reproduce as efficiently. So if you happen, if you have a plant that's in the wild and it, whatever eats that plant, you, you there's this chemical that's released in the predator, um, that disrupts their ability to reproduce then you're going to survive better than plants that don't. Okay. So, um, yeah, I didn't soy, do it in biology, dude. Well, no, no, it's not even biology. It's just, uh, just evolution, right? Imagine you have two plants. Okay. Yeah. This one doesn't harm the predator who eats it. And the same, and this one harms its predator. Okay. So this plant gets eaten up by the predator. Predator does fine. Predator procreates, has, you know, there's a larger population, bigger population pretty much decimates this plant gone off the earth. Okay. This other plant, not the same, right? It's predator eats it and doesn't do so well. 
And so there's a, it, it gets into a balance because that predator can't procreate as well. And so the population is under is actually being controlled by the plant. So it's you're you're able to the plant is able to control the po the population of its predator, right? Okay, now it didn't it doesn't do any it doesn't it's not aware that it's doing that. It's just two no, no, plants randomly it. randomly evolved right and are on right. the earth. And the reason that soy has lasted is right. because it has uh, this and many other uh, chemical protections against being consumed. Okay, so now let me link that to food. Um, am I correct to say, I may be wrong, am I correct to say that all your fake meat has soy in it? All the plant, the plant-based? I, yeah, I don't, I can say a lot of fake products have soy in it, a lot, right? I mean, um, tofu, right? Right? I mean, right. from way back, vegetarian, what was it, tofurkey or whatever, I yeah. mean, just it's been around. Okay, as a, so as a yeah, I go to the restaurant and I order meatless tacos. Chances are that's all loaded with soy. The plant based. It's, pro it's probably probably very high chance of that. The, if you look at the ingredients of like Beyond Meat, okay, there is it's it's all chemicals. There's there's nothing naturally grown or hunted, right? There's yeah. nothing. It's all gone through. Um, well, gone it's got through, the right name then. It's beyond me. It's not me. Yeah, exactly. It's not something me. beyond that. <laughs> right. So you look at it. Every ingredient is un is unhealthy. I mean, maybe it's not salt or something, but but almost all the major ingredients in there. You, I look at it and I think, well, I wouldn't eat, I wouldn't consume that. But if you put it together and you disguise it and make it seem like it's meat, um, people will eat it and go. And what is what is the criteria for whether it beyond meat is something that you put into your diet? Right, because this is a mistake I made. Right, the criteria is someone goes, "Hey, that's unhealthy." Oh, 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 really? It's unhealthy? Yeah, it's unhealthy. I'm like, I don't know who this guy is, but he's just telling me it's unhealthy. Here's all the research I did. Oh, it's unhealthy. <laughs> that was it. Because okay. Joe told me we've seen that right. on everything. Or someone goes, "Oh, that's really healthy." Oh, what is? Oh, yeah, it's really healthy for me. Oh, it is. It's healthy for us. Oh, okay. And you're like, "There's all the research okay. I did before." I just want to so, step on, on that. Hold on. Wait, 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 wait. Wait, wait, hold on, let me finish, let me finish. So the problem is, is that when you just hear these voices out there and you do that kind of research, you don't know. So what does Beyond Meat say? Oh, this is better than meat. It's healthier than meat. And we just, we just buy that. We just swallow that shit whole. And so the, the thing is, is that, is that then you go, oh, okay. Well, then well, that's the first criteria. The second criteria is like, well, maybe I should try it. You know, maybe it is, but better and you, uh, it, you know see how it tastes and you taste you go yeah it's it kind of sort of kind of tastes like meat not exactly like it's not exactly meat but no nah, it's not half bad right well yeah so you made a hamburger where the meat's this thin and the burger's like this right, right. and so you're really not eating i mean you can put almost anything in there shoe leather dog shit you can put almost any dirt you know yeah. and you probably wouldn't even notice there was a there was a thing done where a guy did this experiment, he wanted to see how much sawdust he could put in Rice Krispie treats before people noticed. And it got up to 15%. You could get 15% of the, of the ingredients. Yeah, of the ingredients of-, of um, Is that a video or something we can go see? I, 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 I don't remember where I heard it, but yeah, you might- Could you imagine your own? On it. You're like, oh, yeah, it's great. It's and then a you little get to, dry. <laughs> he, he breaks 16% and all of a sudden you're like, you're like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Did you put sawdust in this? Right? It's <laughs> like this bit, well, it's a magical line. All of a sudden you can taste the sawdust. But the point being is you can put a lot of crap in food and food. I Wait a minute. Food. They do. And I know. What do you mean? That's what you mean. can. It's they the, do. You can put stuff in there that you would never want in your food and and you won't notice it. So the, the whole thing about Beyond Meat was, like I was saying, if you have this massive burger with all this, with ketchup, mustard, onion, um, tomato, lettuce, pickle, right? And a big bun, how much of the taste is the Beyond Meat other than just texture? It just has the texture of meat, right? If you salt the meat and you put, the, you put onion and garlic powder all over the meat, you're pretty much, right. you're pretty much eating eating texture and the rest of the stuff that's in the hamburger. You're not really eating the hamburger. So you can't even tell. If you took the 
But if you threw all that crap away and you and you had a real burger and a Beyond Meat, as like no comparison, no comparison. Right, right, right. Before you can even open your mind to what is healthy, you have to understand what is unhealthy, right? What do we like? We talked about soy, right? What is healthy and what is unhealthy, right? So there's a like so we I think we can all agree, and maybe I'm wrong in this, but I think we can all agree that sugar is bad for us. Right now, some people might be sitting there thinking, yeah, yeah, sugar is bad for me, but but everything in moderation. Right. I, I, I don't really eat that much sugar. <clears throat> well, the problem is, is that people don't understand. And I didn't I didn't, you know, six years ago, I have no clue. Right. None of this shit's taught in health class. What the hell did we learn in health? I have no idea. What did they gave, teach us in health class? I don't think you gave sugar the most important, dangerous food there is in in- no, no, but 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 let's stay on track here, right? Okay, the, the the we don't know, we don't learn, okay, that carbohydrates, okay, turn into sugar like that in your stomach. Yeah, so twenty minutes a well, slice of bread, twenty minutes. Yeah, it's all sugar, right? Yeah. So if you eat a slice of bread, like the like, is at minimum four equal to four teaspoons of sugar of table sugar, okay, at minimum. Okay, you think, oh, well, I'll, I'll eat a tortilla. Mm, it's worse. And when you have a sandwich, you have two slices of that bread. So yeah. now you're starting with eight spoonfuls. Now, if you think, you know, mom would send us to school with sandwiches and mm-hmm. not think anything of it. We didn't think any of it. I sent my daughter to school with sandwiches, right? But when you send your kid to school with eight teaspoons of sugar, you're a, a, a horrible parent. Could you imagine right. opening the lunchbox, right? And the kids pulls out a little sugar. baggie of just a sugar. It's like, right. what am I, a drug dealer? Like What's going on here? It, like yeah. snorting it at lunch on, yeah. on his lunchbox, you know? No, That'd be unheard it, of, it, but that's what you're doing. It, that's exactly what you're doing. And, and you would be right to think that a mother or father who gave their child eight teaspoons of sugar are damaging their child. Okay? Bread is just that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just that. So, um, so that, so I think we can all agree sugar is really bad for us. Okay. And it's in everything. It's literally in everything. So when we went through the whole. Wait, say it one more time. Sugar, what would you say? Isn't everything. And sugar is bad for us. So, right. Okay. I want people to hear that. Stop it. You have no idea how people come to me. Okay. But want to argue our sugar. Yeah. Okay. It's the same thing. When I say sugar, I mean carbs. Carbs. Either okay, both so of talk, them. Let's talk about what it does to the body, right? Now I'm not okay. going to go into this. Thank you. I just totally don't want them to be scared but, of it. Right. No, but you can learn a lot on YouTube. Okay. There are there are doctors up there do, doing talks about sugar and all. Now you find quacks who will tell you, oh no, sugar is not why you're you're, you're you you know causes diabetes. It's this other thing. And of course, those people want to sell you stuff. Don't listen to them. You want to find guys who are just giving talks. They have nothing to sell you and they go off and live their lives. Right. 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 So, um, uh, so what does it do to the body? Okay. If the pancreas didn't, someone who doesn't have a working pancreas, that's type one diabetes. Right. So imagine you don't have your pancreas, like come in the middle of the night and I rip your pancreas out. Right. And you eat like you normally eat. You're totally close. I just stole your pancreas and you're eating and all you could die from one meal could kill you because your blood sugar gets too high and you go into coma and you can die if something isn't done. right. So what do they, what do they do if that happens and you're type one diabetes, right? They give you insulin shot. Okay. Which is exactly what the pancreas does. So what does insulin do to the body? Insulin basically signals to all your cells, stop burning fat, stop it. We can't afford to be burning this fat. We have an emergency on our hands. If we don't do something, we're going to die. Okay? So we, we, what I need you to do, body, and all the cells in the body, is to start burning glucose. Okay? So sugar molecule, half glucose, half fructose. Okay? So start burning the, the liver takes care of the fructose. The whole I watched a whole talk on that, the whole metabolic pathway within the liver and all that and how that all works, right? So it, it, it is as bad as alcohol, okay? Which you're, so you're basically giving your kids something as bad as alcohol and not thinking any of it. I did it. 
didn't, I was ignorant, didn't know anything. Um, so you, so what is the glucose doing, right? So your body, your insulin's saying, hey, body, you better eat this stuff up, okay? So now you burn it out, okay, phew, but, you know, your sugar level goes down, your body's like, okay, cool. And your pancreas calms the hell down, stops sending insulin into the bloodstream, and things calm down. But what do we do? Our blood sugar goes down, get a headache, back of my neck, man, that's just bugging me. You know, I'm not feeling well. I'm feeling like lustless and I, I need to eat. And so I remember saying this to myself many years ago. I would just go into the into the pantry and go, oh, I need carbs. I need to get, I need energy. I have a headache and I'm tired and I got to wheat thins. Oh, great. Ah, I just eat a bunch of wheat thins and, and just carb load, right? And then I'd be fine. It was sort of very drug-like, right? You know, I, I need my I need my hit. I need my drug. But in any case, so your blood sugar goes down and what do we do? We eat, boom, we bring it back up. How many, how many times have you heard people say, well, you should eat little meals all the time during the day. That's like the worst advice ever given to anyone about food, right? Mostly because of how we eat, okay? So your blood, your blood sugar goes down just for a millisecond. You're like, oh, another meal. Oh, another meal. Oh, another meal. So your insulin's up here all the time. Right, and your body is, telling, is being told by the high level of insulin, stop it. Do not burn fat. And well, we have an obesity epidemic in the country. If your body is prioritizing the glucose as fuel, right, over the fat, you're going to stay fat. Any fat that you have in your body is going to stay there. It's not going anywhere. You cannot right, burn right. fat when insulin is high. That's why intermittent fasting is helpful, right? Because you have these long periods where you your, it allows your your insulin level in your blood to go down. It allows the glucose to get processed, right? So there's two things that happen to the glucose, right? Either you burn it, but the liver will also can, uh, store some of the glucose as glycogen. And so you have glycogen stores in your major muscle, like your, your, your uh, quads, major muscle groups and your glutes, right? So you, it gets stored there. Not a lot, maybe 2,000 calories, not a whole lot. Oh, wait, and then the people in America, it does. A lot gets stored in their thighs. No, no, yeah. it's in the muscle, right? It gets oh, stored in, the in the muscle. Yes, it's stored there. So oh, I was thinking glycogen, fat, I'm sorry. Right, you have glyco glycogen stores in, in your in your ma major muscle areas. There might be some elsewhere that it, but I don't know. Like, uh, you know, so take that with a grain of salt. But I do know that it gets stored there and it gets stored in the liver. So that's what fatty liver disease winds up being, right? Because it's starting Which to Which I've had. In the past, you've had that, yes. yes. I know, and I know, don't. It's very common. It's common today, right? Right. My, my doctor told me that I, I no longer have to be concerned about it. I'm okay. I'm at a good level. Oh, nice. Because she's nice. done blood blood work on me and everything, so a lot of right. things are turning better. But yeah, the fatty liver, man, that was a concern. You know. So it used to be, it used to be that only um, adult alcoholics got fatty liver disease, right? So when children started getting it. People were like, wait a minute, this, this kid's not drinking, right? Because here's what was happening. Doctors were hearing from, you know, the you know, seeing, hey, this person has, this is an adult, has fatty liver disease. And this is way back, right? And they're like, well, wait, they say they don't drink, but we don't believe them. Because we know only alcoholics get fatty liver disease. Right, right, right. So, so what it wasn't until they realized, oh no, 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 it's the fructose and everything that's giving us this fatty liver disease because fructose is metabolized 100% in the liver. Alcohol is 90% in the liver and 10% in the brain. Okay, that's why you get drunk because your brain metabolizes some of the alcohol. But right. it, it, as far as the liver is concerned, alcohol and fructose, same, same. They process it exactly the same. Okay. And so you have, so you, so you have this, this, insulin level like pumping up right tells your tells your liver to do certain things but tells the cells in your body hey i need to i need to burn this stuff okay and as long as you keep eating the way you're eating that insulin level is going to stay pretty steady and then now you're on the way to type 2 diabetes but what there's the piece i left out so just like anything just like any drug right your body is a constantly balancing system so if you take a drug today, say you started, you start taking opioids, right? You're going to only be able to take a little bit of it before you feel the high. Okay. But then your body starts getting used to it and you have to take more of it and more of it and more of it. Yep, you're that's becoming pretty common. Right. You're becoming resistant 
to that chemical. Right. Right. So the same thing happens when you become resistant to insulin, your body starts to it, ignore it and be, and say, well, wait a minute, wait a minute. This is a normal thing. And it, it balances out. And then your pancreas needs to pump out more insulin to, to have the same effect. Okay. So you're becoming insulin resistant. Okay. So this is period of pre-diabetes where you're be, as you're becoming more and more insulin resistant. Now, different people are become insulin resistant at different rates and at different times in their life. So you always had a weight problem as a kid. Yeah. Right? Oh, Actually, I was looking at some, well, not totally. I was looking at some pictures of us when dad took us, I don't know where, some park with a lake. And so I was looking at that picture the other day and I noticed that. Oh, dad did something for us. That was cool. Yeah, right. So Can't I remember like, those because hey, then you got a picture. You were little. You were little. <laughs> so um, yeah, I'm like, oh, look, right. Jack wasn't fat. You weren't fat. You, you weren't that fat in that picture. It came later. It came a little bit later, but you, it had hit you faster than it hit me, right? As far as um, uh, carbohydrates affected, right, right. affected you much more than it affected me. So right. our genetics, you know, and our, our, our environment, right? Um, you were, you're the third child. I was the first child. So mom's health was diminishing, you know, she, food pretty much. She killed herself with food essentially. Right. Um, and so her diet was getting worse and worse and worse. And so by the, by the time that's five years between you and me. So that's a different environment that you grew up in, if you will, um, or were formed in, um, that, that might've affected you. Um, that's the only thing I can think of. I don't know what I'm talking about, but I'm guessing stuff here. Um, so you're saying but, I'm turning into mom, right? No, I'm not saying that. No, what I'm saying is because mom diet worsened over the years but the kids who came later were going to have the, the later she had children those children were going to were going to suffer from her bad food choices right. and so i think that might be an explanation for um why you're affected um by carbohydrates the way you are with well, weight. now jim and you are totally different body style than me i'm yes. big yes. i'm just a big yes. big body you guys are more. If we just took our skeletons, if we put skeletons, right? Like my rib cage from here to my back would be maybe like that. I'm small. Right. right? Yours is like that. And that's just bones, not fat, nothing, right? You're just, a, you have a bigger uh, structure than I do. Okay. So, um, so anyway, but, but different people are going to be affected. You know, it's a little, oh, I'm fat because of my genes or I have a low metabolism or it's my thyroid or whatever. Yeah. No. Thank you. No, Bravo. none of that. That's all bullshit, right? It's all evil brain stuff. No, I don't think it is. I think it's just ignorance, right? Like I, I, I knew nothing six years. I knew nothing, zero, zilch, nada. I knew nothing. I just figured stupidly, well, let's see. Humans have been on the planet for 2.5 or to 3 million years or something. It's around that, um, that we think, right? And you think we know how to eat by now, right? You would think that. No, like yeah. my mom said, oh, vegetables are healthy for you. Look, you, you, didn't, you didn't question it. You tried to choke down those nasty ass vegetables. So <laughs> I remember the you, crap. We, we hide our vegetables, mom. Oh my God. Try to push Get it under the potatoes. steak. Stick it under the steak. Can you go, mom, can I be done? Yeah. And, we, did, and yeah. it was like this. It would be like, mom, can I be done? Oh, yeah. Okay. And you guys would do, wait, well, look under your steak. Look under your steak. Like, shut up. Shut up. Please. That was awful, dude. That was there awful. Games anyway, we played for mom with mom. Anyway. So let's go back to the let's go back to the um to what we were saying, and that's um um so talking about insulin, right? And, yeah, and what it does, and how different people are affected with diff a different be just who you are. You're going to be affected. Right, right. People have weight problems; they're more uh prone to insulin resistance, right? So your 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 body's like gets resistant faster than say my body right now it doesn't mean i didn't put fat on i definitely did uh, if i wasn't careful i i could put it on too um just not as efficiently right so um so but the point is you can't lose the weight if you are if you have insulin if your insulin's high because your body is is trying to protect itself from the glucose that's in your blood okay so we can you're, say you don't want to get to the meat of the matter right I want to get to no, the meat of this talk. No pun, no pun. No pun intended. So, okay, hold on, hold on, but let's go. But I want to, I, I want to lay the groundwork because I think it's important. So 
sugar bad for us. Okay. Um, the one of the I'm not sure if sugar is worse or, or the second thing is worse, but they're both bad. And if you did nothing, if you just said, I'm gonna so what cut, do you mean the second thing? I'm the second thing I'm gonna tell you. Oh, got um, it. If you did nothing and you cut out these two things, you'd be so much healthier than you are. Do nothing else, just that alone. Sugar and all of its forms, carbohydrates, all of that. Get rid of all of that. And seed oils, okay? So what the hell is a seed oil, okay? It's canola, sunflower, soy. Wait, um, that's like in everything. It's in literally everything. So when I was doing this, I I stood in the in the in the dressing section, right, for salads because I was yeah. still keto at the time. And I stood there and I thought, I turned it over. Nope, nope. I I went after a while. I'm like, wait a minute. I I was I was kind of haphazardly doing it, right? I'm like, no, no, no. I'm going to do this systematically. I'm going to right. start at that top shelf. I'm going to work all the way across, and then I'm going to go over here. And the next one, and the next one, and the next one. I literally spent, I don't know, maybe 10 minutes flipping bottles. There wasn't one. Oh, and then, oh no, oh, 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 look, with olive oil. Oh, yeah, really? It's like a drop of olive oil in this shit. But the major oil was a, a seed oil. Right. So olive oil is not a seed oil. But, but in the front of the bottle, it says olive oil, made with, with olive, olive oil. oil. Big, big yes. letters, right? Tiny little letters, canola oil and um, or soybean oil. Uh, in the ingredient list. So here's the thing. So what is seed oil? Seed oil is, um, okay, let me ask you this. Do you know what you're eating when you eat bread? What's the majority of what you're eating when you eat bread? Grain. What is it? Uh, is it, are you eating the, are you eating the stalk of the grain? Seeds. Are you eating the root? Right. Seeds. You're eating grass seeds. Okay. Just get that through your head for just a minute. Hold on a minute. I'm sorry. Right. You're eating grass. Okay. Right. right. Basically, well, you're pulverizing the seed, right? So anything that has a seed that you can squeeze, you might get oil out of it, right? And you take right. that oil and they process it through a massive processing plant. Remember when I worked at the vegetable oil plant? Oh, yeah. As a kid, right? Um, our stepdad um, ran that plant, worked there for 30 some odd years and retired there, right. um, as did his father. And um, I, I worked in the expeller room where you take walnuts or almonds and you crush them and you get the oil out. But what there was other places, there was the refinery yep. and it's exactly what it sounds like. It's like oil refinery. It's the centrifuges and the, the bleaching agents and all these toxic um, chemicals, right? To process that. And then the the oil goes rancid. Right. It goes I remember. Rancid, so gotta, do you remember? Do you remember? I remember when, the smell of I, that place. Yeah. Do you remember when, do you remember when, um, uh, when our stepdad was, uh, was working like round the clock, seven days a week, constantly. Yeah. Was, they had just gotten a deodorizer. Yeah. Right? So normally they, they once it goes rancid, they have to deodorize it. That's what he was working on, trying to get the deodorizer. Hold on a minute. When it goes rancid, it's bad. What yes. do they do? De so they're taking the removing the smell so they can sell bad oil. Is that what it is? Effectively. What? Effectively. Wait, did you know this when you worked there? I didn't know. I had no clue. I told you I was an idiot. I didn't know anything. Well, I knew you were an idiot. You're my brother. But I mean <laughs> right. No, you, I didn't know you anything. Didn't realize I realized totally, the deodorizer, that's bad dude, oil. I was 16. I was 16. Right. My job was to shovel walnuts or scrape the muck off of the press. I mean, I, I, you know, it was menial laborer. I was in college. So, yeah, I didn't know anything. I'm just doing my job. I had no clue. So, um, so seed oils, extremely bad for us. And I don't want, I know you, you don't want to spend the time. I'm talking about why. No, but I want to be real clear to people who are listening because I've been doing, you know, this kind of thing for quite a while. There's a lot of you, please do your homework first before you start spatting out oh, this and that. You know what? It, it, we're just having a conversation. Do your own homework, please, and realize yeah. what yeah. is going on. Realize the soybean industry and the evils in that industry and what's going on and, and the monopolies and... 
uh, sugar and, and all the do your research. That's why I'm talking to Charles, because he did years and years of research and he came to this point. So I I OK, so let's let's dial out, dial in the years of research. So I spent literally eight months of my life, all my free time, weekends and nights. And you know how I dive into things, man, I, you get that's weird. All about I it. did. That's all I did for yeah. eight months. Like on the weekend, what was I doing? I was obviously either reading a book on the subject or I was watching um, talks on the subject. So, um, uh, but then after a while, you, 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 you saturate what you learn, right? So I still watch these things and I still, right. you know, there might be something new to learn. I've learned a lot about cholesterol and, and, um, and fiber and all these other things, salt, all the things that we've been told, right? you know, antioxidants, all these different subjects that you hear about and you really don't know much about when you hear about it. We grew up with all these words floating around in advertising. If you realize that all you know about food, you learned not in school, you learned on TV as a kid listening to advertising. That's it. Everything. Breakfast is the most important meal of the day. Where did you hear that first? Or where, where, I'm sorry, where TV. did that originate? Saturday morning did, cartoons. Same here. Same here. But where did it Boy, originate? they poisoned us on Saturday morning cartoons. Oh, my God. Totally. I'm surprised. Yeah. yeah. So, okay. So, where did it originate from? Where did that idea originate from? Um, I would think that you need to get all your, you know, food in in the morning, get a big meal, good no, start No, no, that's the, the why. You're just telling me the why. No, oh. where did that idea originate? Where, where I don't that know. message? Uh, it wasn't it wasn't the commercials it was kellogg's that kellogg's oh it was a breakfast book, cereal think, no no kellogg's wrote it in his book right right and in and that's where it, i that's the first place i've ever seen it is in his book right and he had breakfast cereal to sell right so it, it you could say well is that a scientific thing no it is not i skip right. breakfast all the time all the time Right, Today right. was a, a, a very rare day where I just had a hard boiled egg for breakfast right. right before I went to work out at the gym. So, um, but most of the time I skip breakfast. You I, know, you know. Right, let's think, speaking of breakfast. Okay. If you guys don't believe us, let maybe this will prove it. Okay. Sugar coated cereal. Was it, what, was it sugar coat? I think it was sugar frosted, frosted flakes. They were, they said fat free. Remember that? <laughs> yeah. Fat free frosted flakes covered in sugar the whole thing and this is this is how insane the food industry is this is uh, they think they think you just believe whatever they tell you and you know what you will you believe whatever yeah you're told. why because we're lazy and we don't do the research right? right right i i was that for 54 years dude i was that 54 years you know i'm nowhere Listen near where you are TV, Listen, whatever the TV told me, whatever some blah, blah person told me, just listen to it all. Now, here's the thing. Having said that, don't listen to me, okay? Don't listen to me. I'm not an authority on this, okay? No one, whoever watches this from now until it, you never on YouTube again, um, should listen to me and just think, oh, I just, yeah, okay, I'm just going to do what this guy's told me to do. No, do your own research. Do it yourself. Because when you do your own research, You'll you'll see the why. As a, like, we're just glossing over so much material here that there's no way I can do it justice. And I might have misspoken a few times and said something that's not exactly accurate. You need to you need to do the work yourself so that you know. And because what I'm telling you is you didn't do the work. I, I didn't do the work. You haven't done the work. M most people have not done the work. OK. And to our own detriment. We didn't do the work. So don't make the mistake of doing that, making that mistake again and just listening to me and what I'm saying. Because all that information's out there. You want to find out about sugar? Just go on YouTube, right? Just do the search. You want to find about seed oils? Just put it in the YouTube. There's talk after talk after talk at conference after conference after conference about the, the, the evils of these, these food products, right? You can find out all of that stuff. So it... And then don't just listen to one side of the argument. Part of my journey was to listen to what the vegans had to say, right? And I'm like, I'm going down this path. And I thought, well, 
I should, I, I don't want to get in an echo chamber where I'm only hearing and listening to videos that I believe. I want to go over here because I saw myself going down this path. I thought I was going to go down the vegan path, but as I was studying, I would find my, I'm veering off going to the carnivore path. So I said, well, before I go all the way, you know, it sounds like politics and religion. I wanted, and all right. Yeah. Because the, everybody has their own beliefs. It's just another right. belief. Right. So I said, well, let me hear what the vegans have to say. And I did, and I studied it and I obviously rejected it, but you should do that. You should listen to what the vegans are saying. Right. But then, but then don't take anything anyone says on face value. Do your own research. Do you, and how do you know? Like, at what point do you know I can believe this person? Well, first of all, um, see how they look, right? Go what? Look at the vegans. Wait a minute. Go look at most of the can vegans. We, can we say? Don't, let me finish. Let me finish. All right. All right. Don't just look at the bodybuilder vegans, okay? Because most bodybuilders are supplementing like crazy, like you're never going to do. OK, and a lot of them already have the perfect genes to be in that industry and they've been doing it for years and they weren't vegan from day one. Go look at like someone like Dr. Greger, right, who who espouses this. The dude looks like you could snap him in two with, with my pinkies. OK, go look at how healthy these people are and see how they're doing and look at the rest of the world. Right. See how the average person is doing health wise, weight wise and so forth. And then look at people who are like doing what I'm doing, carnivore. Right. And you might look at the keto people and say, well, they're doing pretty good. And, and they are. But I, everyone who's ever gone keto to carnivore will tell you it, it's a big it's a big graduation. There's a big leap. There's a big leap between the standard American diet, which is also called SAD, standard American diet, and to keto. And there's an even bigger improvement when you go keto to carnivore. So just you have, have you, to do your own. You have to uh, do your own research. I just want to hammer this down. Do not believe what I'm telling you. Go free. All I'm doing is, is giving you a seed, right? To say, ooh, wait, I should question everything I think I know right. about food. Right. And then it's all online. I I, I learned everything through uh, talks on YouTube, conference talks by doctors and books on Am um, Amazon Audible. Right. So I did the I did Audible and I listened to all. Like, all right. What were, some of, pool, what were some of the books you were listening remember? Uh, uh, well, I'll tell you why this is, I'll give you a list and you can put them in the, um, in the links down, oh, down below. Just, I have a massive list of videos and a massive list and we'll just, I'll just send it to you. I send it to people who are interested in this, in this uh, approach and I'll just send it to you and we'll put it in the, in the bottom. We'll put it in the um, description and then people can just click on all those. There, oh, there, there's so much information. I want to know what you what do you what do you do? What's it like? What are you eating? What what why do okay. you look so good? The best I've ever seen in my okay. life. And it's not just looking good, it's really feeling the best that I've ever felt too. Um a lot you said, of you said 20 years younger when you told me. Yeah, I mean, I feel like I have more energy now and I feel better now than I did in my 30s. That, okay. Yeah, that's that's scary. 30 years, dude. Oh, so is that but 30 that's, years? It is 30 oh, years. Y'all so man. Right. So I'll tell you all the things that I do. Right. So um, it's diet and exercise. There's nothing else that I do. Nothing. I don't take supplements. I don't take any. There's nothing. I drink water. That's it. I drink nothing else. I drink water. Just not flavored water. water just no, water. just uh, out of the tap, but filtered. OK, I, that's the water I drink. I eat meat. OK. OK. And this is what, I, I don't understand why this is so confusing to people. When I tell people they go, well, do you eat? Cake? No, it's cake meat. Uh, do you eat, uh, you know, chips? No, it's not meat. If it didn't once breathe <laughs> and you had to kill it, it's not meat. All right, let's okay, at least it's the, real simple. So, let's, oh, so let's let's talk ahead. about the different meats. Yeah, I right. eat mostly beef. That's what I was gonna ask okay? you. I eat lamb. What's your favorite? Um, wait, what's your favorite beef? Pork? Wait, let me finish. Let me let me go through them all. Hold on. Don't get all bitchy, You're as dude. bad as I am, dude. You're I'm like, like, okay, try to be like, all right, try to stay on track here. And then you're like taking me off track. I'm trying to stay uh, on track. So, oh, yeah. Right, dude. Give me a minute. Give me okay. a minute. I, I'll, okay. Then I, I we can go back into the beef part. So beef, pork, lamb um, is the majority of what I eat, right? And then there's and then there's things like um uh seafood, right? Um, shellfish mostly, but shellfish doesn't have high fat. So I tend to dip it in butter. Um, so I do eat butter. Right. Um, and then, um, uh, fish and chicken, eh, you know, uh, and I'm going to have Turkey going over gyms for Thanksgiving. 
um, this week. And so I'll have a turkey leg. He's like, it'll have seasoning on it. I'm like, I'll just peel the skin off. You know, I'll clean it off. I don't run under the water. I don't care. I'll get rid of it. It won't be on there when I eat it. So I'll, 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 I don't like turkey. I never have. Even as a kid, I didn't like it. But so those are the foods that meats that I eat, right? It's that. Um, I The only seasoning I use is salt because it's a mineral. Um, not even pepper. Pepper's from a plant. I don't need any plants at all. Anything. If it grew in the ground, it had roots at one point or came from something that did, I don't eat it. Okay? And so... Uh, so is that it? Butter? Oh, eggs. I don't, I used to do cheese, hard cheeses because soft cheeses still has carbs in it, right? Hard cheeses. You have to look on the back, make sure it's a hard cheese and it won't have any carbs. in it. Okay. So now to your question, what was my favorite? What's my favorite beef? It doesn't almost doesn't matter. Almost right. That almost doesn't matter. It's pretty much the same after you eat it all the time. You're like, you know, I don't like filet mignon. I still like filet mignon because Wait, it's like what's super... the one you buy the most of? Let's talk oh, about that. Um, okay, so it is the, usually the cheap, the cheapest stuff. Okay, so today what's I went cheapest? to the store. What's the cheapest? Uh, it's not always the same. So I went to the what? store oh, on okay. Saturday. I went to the store on Saturday, and for three, it was three ninety nine a pound. Tri tip, dude. Three really? ninety nine a pound. I'm like, I'm coming I, my freezer's full, dude. My freezer's full. I'm like. I'm buying it. I don't care. I got it. I'll find room. I was jamming it into my freezer. Did it have, have a no yellow room. sticker saying manager special? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I don't ever buy that. I bought that once years ago. I'm like, never, ever will I buy it again. The first thing I look at before I even look at the price. Well, no, I look at the price first per pound. And I go, oh, $3.99 a pound. Holy crap. Never see it that low. $4.99 a pound, sometimes when it's on sale. And the next thing I look at is when did they package this stuff? Oh, it's what? packaged. When is the package date? I look at my phone. Oh, got it. And I, oh, today's the tenth. Okay, that was packaged on the ninth. All right, I guess it was packaged on the tenth. Great, that's the one I want. Okay, so it doesn't say when it's packaged. It says. I didn't know packaged. that. Yeah, I did only have the best by date or use by date well, or whatever. There's package date. I go to Whole Foods for for some meats, and I go to my local Albertsons for the other meats. And basically, they both have it on there. It's like a tiny little print. You have to look for it. And they always put the ones that have been packaged. Today I never knew that, back. dude. I just learned that literally this. I was this many years old when <laughs> I learned that. <laughs> so, but they put it in the back, right? So they always put the, like the old stuff. They scoot it to the front, put the oh, new stuff in the back. Rotating stock. That's all. Exactly. Yeah, and so, they... look, when you, all you buy is meat, you get really familiar. Really with good at counter, it. Yeah. Really, right. So I'm like, okay. So I look at the I look at the price. And then I look at the package date. And so typically I'm buying tri-tip and I'm buying um, chuck. Now, I'm probably going to regret saying this because it'll probably drive the price of chuck up someday. If enough people hear about this, right? We're only six degrees from everybody in the world hearing this. But chuck steak is amazing, okay? It is so good. You have the whole chuck steak, right? Now, there's a whole part that's a little bit, a little tough. No, but but that, let's talk about it. People don't realize that's the meat people buy to make pot roast. Chuck yeah, roast. Okay, right. Chuck right. roast. It's okay, chuck go ahead. Roast. Yeah. Because it's like that thick. And yeah. The steak yeah. might be this big. It's beautiful. And I, I cook the whole thing on the grill like it's a steak. And then I, I put it on my plate. It's like falling out of my plate. It's so big. You put the whole and thing on your plate? I put the whole thing on my plate. Yeah. Okay. Well, no one else is going to eat it but me. <laughs> what am I going to do? Like carve okay. it up and then put All it right. in the, No, I'm not doing that. Put the whole thing on my plate. I eat like maybe a third to a half of it, right? Depending on how hungry I am. And right. then a lot of times I just cut up the rest for lunch. And so what I do is I, I if I know I'm going into the office on that the next day, which right. I go in the office two days out of the week, I will cut it up into small pieces, put it into uh, a Tupperware, but not plastic. Wait, glass. strips or cubes? Do you cut in strips or cubes? Well, I cut it in strips and then I cut pieces of those, so you, right? Yeah, so you cut strips this way and then you cut it across this way. Got it. Because you don't want, I can't cut at work. I only I have a fork. Like, I'm not trying to do a whole show on cutting steak, but <laughs> I'm just right. curious. Sorry. Right. So you throw it. So I put that all, I put that into a, a Tupperware thing. And then when it's lunchtime, I just pop the top off because it's made of plastic. I don't want plastic touching my food. And I put like paper towel over the top. It's all glass. Stick it in the microwave, right? At, and here's the other thing. When you have, when you eat meat, you have a lot of leftover meat. You need to learn how to heat meat properly in a microwave. 
Okay. Wait, wait. Most let me people... clarify. I believe you said it wrong. I want to re-clarify. Your Tupperware is made out of what? Glass on the bottom. Okay, because you said plastic. I said, oh, no, I said it's Tupperware, not plastic. Oh, not plastic. Got it. Not okay. plastic. It's All right, not. I just want to glass. You only yeah. use glass and right. then the and plastic I, lid. And Right. When I take my, when I get my meat from the store, I take it out of the plastic and I put it into aluminum foil and I put that in the fr freezer. Okay. Right? Because here's what happens. This is what I was doing, right? I was freezing my meat. It'd be frozen. Plastic stuck right to the meat. Then I defrost it, which is heating that plastic, this thin layer of plastic. How is that not leaching into my meat? Wow. How is that not getting That's into my meat? That's interesting because I didn't, right? I never thought of that. I had an old fr right. freezer. Thank you. Thank you. Well, my meat's poisoned now. Well, no, it's not. No, uh, let it defrost more naturally. Don't heat it. I'll just okay? leave it on the counter. That's normally just how I defrost counter. everything. That's how I would do it if I always remembered to pull meat out of the freezer. But I'm an idiot. Wait a minute. I'm busy. And you I eat forget. one thing. You eat one thing. You can't I remember to pull I, it out. I did. What part of I'm an idiot did you not understand? <laughs> okay. So anyway, so I do that, and that becomes my lunch. Okay. So that's sort of the the. Hey, wait a minute. The, you have the same uh, exact printer I have right over here. I'm looking at the printer behind you. Uh, there. I have that exact printer right there. <laughs> I'm like, wait, that looks familiar. No, you don't. It's not the Sorry. exact. It's just another HP, dude. It's not the same. Is it color? Is yours color? I don't know. Hey, Tammy, is our printer color? Is our printer color? No. Then it's not the same. Mine's color. Screw you. Whatever. Ah. Anyway. Okay, my, so, oh, but mine's better. Go ahead. It wait, probably maybe, is. That, maybe I didn't buy that. My wife bought that. Hmm? It's got the same little screen you got, everything. It looks just yeah, like yours. It's an HP, dude. That's why. All right. So anyway, so anyway, so um, so that's that those are the different meats. And then if if uh ribeye's on sale, right? And usually in the big packs where they have multiple ribeyes, and if, if it's on sale, I'll splurge on that. I'll Rib get... ribeye goes on sale. <laughs> yeah, it does. <laughs> I can't remember the last time I saw ribeye on sale. It goes on sale down to like $8.99 a pound sometimes. I think when like yeah, there's there's certain times. There's certain reasons meat goes on sale at certain times. Right. Like right. I know the short ribs go on sale when when rib roasts go on sale during the holidays because right. it, it comes off it. It's so you did the long. I just had this before we started this. I ate dinner and 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 I had beef ribs, the long ones, oh, and they were four ninety nine a pound. They're four ninety nine a pound, and that's what I had for dinner. Nice. So those are the best. And um, uh, and I barbecue everything, so I barbecue all all the food. Um, what else? What else? Except for shrimp. When I make shrimp, which is very rarely, I take like frozen shrimp and I boil it and then and then I um I just add butter to it. I'm outside, it's raining, I'm outside, you know, barbecuing. I don't care. I, I I'm I'm gonna eat. I have to eat. Wait, hold on. Are you barbecuing in the rain? Oh uh, yeah. I, I, wait, okay. In California, when it does rain, I barbecue in the rain. Oh, okay. what, twice so, yeah. a year? Once or twice a year, exactly. Right. <laughs> you know, I keep seeing my beard and there's a line going through it. It looks like it's part of the headphone cord, see? And I'm like... No, I don't see it, dude. Is your cord right. coming you're out of my mouth? A, you're having a hallucination. <laughs> yeah. Can we cut this part out right there? Is it? <laughs> Talk oh to my the gosh. editor. So, Talk yeah, to I'm the like, editor. Yeah, so keep talking. I'm like ripping my thing. Yeah, okay. Okay, um, All right, okay so those are the different... That's the different foods that I eat. So those are different foods that I eat. Mm -hmm. And the... Um, uh, I mean, that's it. There's like literally nothing else. Uh, salt and butter. Salt and butter. Salt, butter, eggs, um, and any any of the meats, right? Any any, meats. any all right. Butter, carry but gold. My, yeah, I, I do carry gold. The grass, the grass fed, um, uh, salted. I think it's salted. It might be sal salted or unsalted. It doesn't matter to me. Um, butter. Yeah, it's grass fed cows from grass fed milk. From grass-fed cows, they make right. the butter. Use use your unsalted butter when you bake, so you're not baking. So you're yeah. probably in salted butter. Right. That that's fine. Yeah. But any butter, or I mean, with that's the butter. Tiny, that's my butter. That's the that's your butter. choice. That's not yeah. The other stuff is poison. This is no, good no, one. no, no. Okay. I just, I, just want to I like the fact that. that grass. I like the fact that it was grass-fed, and and a lot of people in the keto community use that butter and like it, and uh, other carry, people like yeah, other types. Yeah, gold's huge. <laughs> Yeah, and other people like other types. I mean, it's whatever. It's just okay. butter. as long as it doesn't have crap in it. Here's one thing you got to worry about: olive oil in the butter. Okay, they love to like put olive. Oil. Why? 
Is it cheaper? Probably, <clears throat> but it makes it smoother. So my wife doesn't eat like I do. So I buy her the, the I buy her Kerrygold too, but I accidentally once bought her the olive oil one. And it's just very, like, it's super smooth. It's Wait, not, doesn't so there's a Kerrygold with olive oil? Yeah, the tub, you know, the spreadable. Oh, I don't yeah. use the tub. I don't use the tub. Only because I don't sticks. need it. I right. buy the, yeah, the, the Solid. blocks. The and blocks. that guarantees there's nothing put in it. If it's in no, a tub. No, 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 doesn't guarantee. I've no never way. seen it. I, I can say this. I've never seen it, but okay. I look every time. I make sure I know what I'm buying. So butter and um, salt, and that's it. Butter, salt, yep. Eggs and meat. That's it. All right. So that's if it's an animal, and, the meat from the and animals. And water. Right. And, and water. water. Okay. And water. Exactly. Yeah, right. And then uh, grass-fed beef? Is it a grass? You mean? So, okay. So grass-fed beef, nine, all cows are grass-fed. Okay. It's just, what are they finished? So right before they go to slaughter, somewhere between nine and 18 months, they, they may go on a grain diet partially. Right. Right. And the reason they do that is to fatten them up because right. grains, I think I want you to hear this very carefully. Grains yeah. make mammals fat. Okay. Okay. That's why they do it. That's why they, they've been doing it forever. Farmers know. It will they say the, grain the finished. That, right. The, the food that we eat, is basically what farmers have been giving their animals for for forever, pretty much, to fatten them up for the market because they get more money from it. Okay. So anyway, um, so yeah, so there's a whole thing of like, you know, and some that's people so like sad grains, because some people like grass fed. Yeah. It's so sad because the cows are like, hey Sam, come over here, we're getting grain today, and they don't realize they're ready for the slaughter. They're getting all fattened up to be. How about killed. the ones that are still eating grass? They're thinking, well, nothing changed. They're not on grain like those guys, and all of a sudden, Phew. yeah, but, um, crazy. But the thing is, is that there's this whole debate, like, oh, you should really be eating grass and eating grains and da, 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 all that, and it's, it, you know, I, it's splitting hairs in my mind. It's so splitting hairs. If you can't afford it, it's better to eat the the, the meat that you can afford, right? So, so why you don't why any... meat? So why meat is the question. Right. right. That might, you might be going, well, yeah, okay. So you eat the meat. Well, what, you don't eat fruits. You don't eat vegetables. Like what? So why meat? There is nothing in meat. I mean, I'm sorry. There's nothing in that's, in, there's no nutrition in plants that you can't find in abundance in meat. But there's a ton of nutrition and things that we need in meat that you can never find in plants. Okay. I'm right. not going to go into the details of it. We don't have time. It's long enough. But um, if you look at the the list that I sent you of uh, all of the yeah, it'll be down one stuff. Yeah, yeah, we'll have you, it. In, if in you the go notes. through all that stuff, you, the people there know it better than I do, and will explain it far, far better in far greater detail than me just saying it. Okay, you got to promise me to come back and discuss why not plants. Okay, that's a whole other we'll thing. Do another one, sure. Yeah, we'll do another. We'll do another conversation yeah. because I know that's a lengthy one. But there's a lot of reasons, so we'll discuss that later. Yeah. But we got the we got to the meat of this issue. That's all I care right. about. There you go. You got but, that joke in. <laughs> yeah, twice I got it in twice. I Did I you? bought that I joke, that. man. I had to use it as much as possible. Oh, yeah. You don't uh, pay royalty, so you you don't have to pay royalty. Okay, I got a, I got a. Um, Every time email. you use it, you have to pay some guy. We got your writers. <laughs> exactly right, Conan O'Brien. So I got an email address um on the screen. I don't have it right now, but it will be there when people watch this. Uh, right. If you're watching on YouTube, if you're listening by podcast, it'll be the email will be in the notes. So um, the need the you gave us books. Did you give us what else? Is there's a whole list videos, of videos. There's a list of YouTube videos. There's books. Uh, I don't remember, dude. There, oh, don't worry about it. It's, it's all it. in there. There's a but bunch of it, stuff in there. I'll have it for everybody to access, and you can you can write. If you need, if you have a, a question, and uh, our people, we we got people that go through all the comments and everything for us, so they'll pull out all the you know the appropriate questions and and we'll get back to you on the, those things. Yeah, when Conan O'Brien isn't writing our jokes, he's going through the emails for exactly. Us. Yeah. He's been complaining like forever. He hates doing that. He's like, "What is there ever a good question?" Anyway, <laughs> so uh, thank you for your time. Sure, um, it was fun. You you look great. I, I wouldn't you. I would right. do this if I didn't believe it. I want this for everyone. I do. I would if you could spend a day in my body, 
Yeah. You would, you'd, you'd be like, oh, fuck, I want to feel that way all the time. Well, dude, I'm, I'm I don't totally know if I want to be a day. I don't know if I want to be in your body at all. So anyway. <laughs> if we could switch places like Freaky that's Friday. Maybe, yeah, exactly. Right? Freaky <laughs> Friday or, oh, for the next generation, for 18 again. How about that? <laughs> what? That's a movie? I don't even know. That's a movie, movie, yeah. It was right. with Zac Efron and they. They did Freaky Friday twice, though. Yeah, but they did 18 again. Uh, later on for the or the wasn't there a generation. movie called 30 where they did the same thing i don't like, know movie's been made a million they, times they've they done that story 30. yeah they did it on hallmark i saw it the other day but anyway um thanks again and sure. uh we'll have you we'll have you back to discuss some of the other areas that we want to discuss because they're because to me it's very interesting and just to end this guys we're talking about this because he has proven it he's proven it all right, but, once you prove but, something. Wait, wait, wait. Don't, don't, don't take my word for it. Look through the notes, do your own research, come to your own that, conclusions. Totally. Because I made the mistake of listening to people like one guy, and I'm just one guy. But these right. the resources I, 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 I gave you are a lot of people who know this stuff far better than I do. That's and, a lot of resources, dude. A it's lot. It's a lot. It's a ton. And I have more. I have more. <laughs> All I've, right, man. More, I've researched more than that. So we can uh, talk to you later then. All right. Yeah. All right. Take Appreciate care. It. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye bye.